coding is at the heart of the software engineer interview. Lots of other attributes get measured and evaluated during an interview, but coding is the one that really applies to the job the engineer is getting hired to do. How does the coding interview work, and what's the best way to get through this process? Hi, I'm John L. Miller, the Deliberate Engineer. I spent 40 years coding and 30 of those years working at companies like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, both interviewing people there and being interviewed. In this video, we're going to focus on the coding interview. Software engineers solve programming problems on a daily basis. Sometimes this takes the form of specification or architecture. Sometimes it's fixing bugs or solving problems. Sometimes it's writing new code from scratch. But often it's writing code that implements relatively straightforward algorithms or transforms data in some meaningful way. Time is limited in coding interviews, which really restricts the kind of questions that can be asked. As a hiring manager, I've tried all kinds of different ways to work around this problem, but nothing works as well as a simple problem worked together with the candidate for 20 to 30 minutes. This is the reason the coding interview today looks much the same as it did in 1990 when I had my first coding interview. Thinking out loud is a critical part of the interview process. It allows the interviewer to get more of an idea of what the candidate is thinking and the options that they're considering and discarding. Unless you're told to do otherwise, you should always think out loud during the problem solving phase and the coding phase. The reason for this is simple. The goal of the interview isn't just for the candidate to solve a problem. It's for the interviewer to understand the candidate's thought process, how they go about solving the problem. As an interviewer, I always give this guidance to candidates. Please think out loud as you're working the problem. And remember, a bad solution is better than no solution, and a good solution is better than a bad solution. But one of the best things is to be able to take a bad solution and turn it into a good solution. The ability to iterate on a problem is one of the key attributes for a successful programmer. Before starting on the problem, agree on the requirements and the restrictions for solving that problem. Is the candidate allowed to use a particular programming language? Are there libraries that are off limits or are there particular ways of solving the problem that need to happen? Is it important to handle out of memory conditions and other errors that can crop up in the operating system in the code that the, that the candidate writes? Should the solution be optimized for space or time? The programming problem starts with a pithy explanation of the problem to be solved. For example, write a function that finds the median of a list of numbers. Write a function that determines the most common letter in a string. Implement a function to reverse a linked list. Sometimes the interviewer will give a function prototype or a class definition to make it easier to solve the problems. Other times coming up with that definition is left up to the programmer as part of the interview. Whatever the case, it should take less than a minute to successfully communicate the problem and its nuances. One of the benefits to the candidate thinking out loud is that the interviewer knows what they're considering and the directions they're going and can provide subtle hints to get them back on track if they happen to drift away. There may only be time to write code for one solution to the problem, so giving the interviewer the chance to give feedback and steer towards the solution that will be the most interesting to see code for is a good idea for making it so that the programmer can be more fully evaluated. Candidates should make sure they have all the information that they need to solve the problem. This displays the candidate's thoroughness, agency, and attention to detail. In my interviews, the candidate doesn't have to be letter perfect in the code that they write, as long as they get the, the general gist of the problem put down nicely. However, there are certain errors which will count against them in the code. This includes things like intent errors and off by one errors. The reason for this is simple. In the interview environment, you're often writing code on a whiteboard or an editor, something that's not an IDE. If you're doing your work on a day-to-day -day basis in an IDE, that will find any compilation errors, for example, for misspellings or missing a semicolon or what have you. However, intent errors and off-by-one errors are things that compilers can't catch for you. That type of an error, if you make it in your production coding, is likely to find its way into the product. That is going to be a big problem. Here's an example of a typical interview problem. Write a function is in string that takes a string to search and a string to search for in that candidate string and returns whether or not the string is present. This is a great time for the candidate to ask clarifying questions. For example, does case matter in the solution? Should the string be normalized or tokenized? Or should all spaces and punctuation be honored in it? For example, if the word Bob with spaces on either side of it is being searched for, does it need to match exactly in the candidate string? After all the details have been ironed out, the candidate should still propose their solution before they actually begin the coding. Here's an example of thinking out loud while solving this problem. 
Okay, so it's a simple substring problem. I'd probably look on Google and see if there's any function that can actually find a substring within another string that would match the needs of this function. Is that okay, or would you like me to actually solve the problem? The interviewer should give kudos to the candidate for knowing that there's already some functions out there that will take care of solving this problem for them, but they should also give guidance that will give them the most information for being able to recommend hire or no hire for the candidate. So let's say in this case the interviewer says, yep, that's great, I'm glad you know about that function, but why don't we go ahead and solve it just using the core intrinsics of the language? Great, says the candidate. So what I'll do is I will take the string that I'm searching for and step through character by character in the string that I'm searching, and I'll do a string compare between that search string and the position I'm at in the, in the string being searched. At this point, the interviewer can take a look and either say, that sounds good, why don't you go ahead and, and give a shot at interviewing it, or they can encourage the, the candidate to think of a more efficient solution. In our example, let's say that the interviewer wants to have a more efficient solution. So he might say something like, well, candidate, I, you know, I think that'll work, but why don't we try and find a more efficient solution? For example, what if the input strings are half a million characters for the string that we're searching for, and a million characters for the string that we're searching in, and you wind up with an n-squared search with million character long strings, uh, there's got to be a way to make it more efficient. The candidate should think about solutions based on this feedback from the interviewer. For example, they might say, well, I guess I, I do need to check the starting position at every spot in the, the string I'm searching until I find a match. So I can stop then, that way I don't have to check the whole search string. Another thing that I can do is I can take a look and say, well, I'll go character by character in the string that I'm searching for, and as soon as there's a mismatch, I'll stop checking it. I won't check all the way. And that should give much better results. And finally, uh, I'll take a look and make sure that there's room for the whole string that I'm searching for to fit in what's left of the string at the position I'm searching in. So those things together should make the solution much more efficient. At this point, the interviewer will probably say, well, oh, sounds good. Why don't you go ahead and code that up? The candidate should start implementing the solution to the problem. They don't have to think out loud as they're solving the problem, but narrating can still provide value to the interviewer, which is the goal for both of these people. A couple of tips to candidates. First, choose short variable and function names just to make it quicker to write your solution on the board. But make sure that you explain to the interviewer that you would use more appropriate names if it was writing production code and that you're just doing this to save time. Secondly, you should think about putting some comments or pseudocode in place so that you don't get lost while you're programming. This takes a little bit of extra time, but it can pay big dividends in terms of keeping you from getting confused as you write your code. And finally, think of some test cases that you can do. Simple, straightforward, happy test cases, and maybe some, uh, some corner test cases that you'll be able to execute and really see that your code is working correctly. This will help you verify the code you write, and it also shows thoroughness in you as a candidate. After the code is complete, as an interviewer, I'll usually ask, is this code correct? What I want to see at that point is for the candidate to take a look at their code and see the code not as they intended it to be, but as it's actually written. This is a, a key skill for developers, to be able to read the code as it sits, to be able to find problems in that manner, to be able to test it effectively. A successful candidate should be able to evaluate their code and be confident that it's working, at least for the main cases, with a couple minutes of effort. If there's time left after the first implementation, then the interviewer has a couple of options. The first is they can say, well, great, how do we make this better and move it forward? Or they might ask questions about the performance and the correctness of the overall algorithm and ask for some more examination of that. Or lastly, they can always ask a brand new question, although that has a certain cost associated with it in terms of communicating that question. Over time, an experienced interviewer generally collects a set of preferred questions. These are questions that they've been asking for years and years. They know the variations of answers and they know the types of mistakes people will commonly make. They know how long it takes people of different skill levels to be able to solve that problem. In other words, this problem is calibrated to give them more information than just can they solve this problem when they ask it to a candidate. My favorite problem I've been asking for 25 years now. It's matured a little in that time, gotten easier to communicate, I've learned more solutions from it actually from candidates. And those candidates, by the way, wound up getting great scores on their interviews. Summing things up, the coding interview should be an interactive exercise jointly between the interviewer and the candidate. The candidate's responsible for making sure that they communicate as much information as possible about how they go about solving problems, how they do the work. 
Both sides need to work together to make sure they do a good job of time management. The candidate should make sure they understand all the intricacies of the problem before they start coding. And as they're coding and as they're problem solving, they should be thinking out loud, demonstrating to the interviewer exactly what's going through their mind as they solve the problem. Even if they're not making any progress at a moment, seeing what the candidate thinks about and discards can be very valuable in terms of being able to pass the interview. If you've been interviewed at Big Tech or if you're an interviewer for them, how does this match up against your understanding of the process? Is there anything I missed that would be useful to other people who watch this video? Please leave comments down below if you have any suggestions or comments on this or thoughts. I love reading them. I'll answer all the comments I can. And if you like this content, please think about subscribing to the channel uh, or leaving a like. Both of these tell me that I should keep making videos like this. Thank you very much and keep on pushing forward.